Hello and welcome. And we're going to be installing Millway camber plates. This is the street version on our M2. This is an M2 LCI. Competition's a little different, but uh, not too different. So something worth noting that I didn't know. So I've got these second hand. They were on a, I think they're on a 240. A 240 uses an M12 bolt kind of coming off the shock. An M2 uses an M14. So uh, I could have drilled it out myself and mussed it up, but for a few bucks, I went to a machine shop and had, I gave them the factory one and this one, and it said, make that like that. So uh, important to note, you need the specific M2 one or the M2 competition one. Okay, I have already learned how to do this on the other side, and uh, that's how I learned it was the wrong size, which was really fun, and we'll get going on this side. So first thing you wanna do, is remove your engine cover. Now, I've just loosened these, easy. These are uh, 10 mil, three of them, there's a 90 degree turn. You'll feel them go loose enough. And then you can just pull that up. Right there. Now, that is the positive terminal for jump starting. So keep that in mind in case, uh, yeah, you wanna zap yourself. So we're gonna put a rag on that. Rag securely in place, uh, Aaron from Help me DIY. Yeah, learn from his mistakes on that one. Okay, now we've got this little guy. Now, there is a pin here, which you can remove. I use a little pry tool or fingernails or whatever you got. It's just a little plastic push rivet. Um, you might just move it to the side like that because it just kind of clips into here. See that there, got this in the channel. Okay, now we've got a few bolts to undo. So, uh, what you're going to need for this, obviously, to do this job, let's have a look. You're going to need a bunch of stuff. Now, most of this you'll have. One thing you're going to probably need is a pass-through socket um, to tighten everything down or maybe even or loosen your uh, your top nut off. But for the rest of it, we can get going on. So we need, uh, that's a 13. Okay, something else you might not need, have uh, a torque set. Something, if you're working on this car, you need a torque set which is a bunch like that, and you need an e-torx set, because there's heaps of stuff that use an e-torx on this car, and that is that weird looking star bolt. Basically, it's the female version of the torx. Get it? Yeah, not too hard. But yeah, there's lots of bolts that are gonna need this, so uh, let's start unbolting a few things. Now, we'll start off with the big one. So this is a E18 to take this guy off. It's not on there. It's super tight. I'll put all the torque specs on everything as you put when you need to put it back together at the end. Okay. That off. A 13 mil ratchet to take these guys off. Now, before we really loosen them all up, we're just gonna break them because It'll be easier to get now. Watch yourself if you haven't put a rag on there, you're gonna zap yourself probably by now. Okay, we're just gonna put a jack underneath the, hu the hub. Oh, I've already done it. Jack under the hub, and we're going to compress it a bit. Okay, just to Make sure it doesn't drop out or anything like that. So we're just gonna loosen those bolts off. Then we're gonna come back down here and do a few of these lines that are clipped into various places, which are the sensor, ABS sensor, and brake lines and things like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn the sound off so it doesn't annoy your partner or whatever when you're listening to this. Now, I wanna see if I can loosen this. This car has got very low kilometers on it, and on the other side, I was able to actually loosen it, so it compressed it, it held the inner bit. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to get a pass-through socket. So, uh, it's an 18 mil socket, and it needs to be the, like that, you can't, you, it's gotta be the multi-point one. The other one won't fit, because it's some weird looking nut in there. So yeah, you need a pass-through, a multi-point pass-through if you're gonna do it. Um, 
could maybe do it if you had a socket and you got vice grips on it. This one is big enough that I could get a tiny little ratchet with a 10 mil to hold it and you could maybe do it that way with vice grips. But let's just see if we can move it. So I got a mark. We've got a, a mark here lined up. You see the blue. And I'm just going to see if when I move it, that turns. If it doesn't turn, I can keep moving with going with it. But otherwise, so I'm just going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's moving. It's spinning. So I'm going to have to get a pass-through socket on there to take that off. No big deal, but yeah, just keep it in mind. So there's pass-through sockets, which are like a socket with a hole cut in it, and you can get a little wrench in there and do little tiny turns, or you can get a ratcheting ones. There's a, a few different types. Okay, well, we can't do that right now because I gotta go to pass-through socket tomorrow, but we can go underneath and have a look. So under here, we gotta get as much room as we can. So we're gonna undo this, just pull it out of there, and there's another where it clips in down here, we'll pull that out. You just don't want it really hangy from that. We have lots of clearance. Uh, you, some guys take the shock out. I'm not going to be doing that. You need to undo the brake line clip, which is right here. And there's a little, there's a, you just kind of pull that up and it comes out. I don't think we didn't have to do it on the other side. Don't have to do this side. Sway bar end link. We need to do this. So that's up here. And you've got a, uh, it's a T30 Torx bit to hold it. And that's a 16 mil nut, but we might be able to move it before it starts spinning. Um, and then we'll get the, get the wrench on there and, and pull it off that way. Okay, let's see if we can just get it loose without it really turning. Ugh. Not with that. Okay, I just need to get some bigger tools. Okay, excuse the poor view, but yes, my this ratchet I can Okay, there we go, we got it moving. I'm gonna switch a few things around. Okay, I've got that. Now I'm gonna do it instead of turning the knot, I'm going to turn the center. filming it's gonna be a bit tricky okay we're gonna have to do this off camera but uh that is going in there i can't get it straight and it's gonna be coming undone there we go Oop. don't lose the nut there we go got it at a height it was happy at and yeah you can just pass it through then so uh out it comes okay now that's going to give us a lot more room when we go to drop it um, all right, like I said, if you need to drop the whole thing, you're going to uh, want to disconnect the brake line. But that is us down here for now. I don't think there's anything else we need to disconnect. Got all our bolts undone up top. Let's uh, come back and uh, take that top nut off with a pass-through. It's always a good idea to just put the nut back on when you took it off there. And on the, if you're on the other side, there is the headlight leveler, which is a little... Thing bolted onto one of the arms here, and that's a uh, it's just a little 10 mil uh, nut, and you need to hold it with a 10 mil wrench on the inside and disconnect that as well. Let's see if I can go over and show you. There you go. This is the headlight leveling arm that I mentioned, and then down here, you just there's a little 10 mil nut on this side, and a little uh, a little holder kind of in. Come on, try to show you. Right there, there's a little 10 mil holder, and then there's a 10 mil nut on the other side. So yeah, you want to be a, uh, removing that as well. And then of course you have another sensor line on this wheel, which I think is, uh, well, it's either ABS, brake light, brake pad, whatever. Uh, pretty sure that is the pad sensor on this side, but uh, you've got that to disconnect there too. Well, I went out and got some pass-through sockets. Now, if you're like me, and didn't know what that was, or a lot of my friends, when I asked if anyone has a pass-through socket, my local kind of specialty tool place had them. And that's the socket. It's, uh, they got holes in them. So that is just long enough to fit down there and grab that nut. 
and this now this is a 10 mil socket of all the sockets i have this has to be some old cheap no brand i don't know maybe uh, maybe one of my old neighbors gave this to me maybe the kids gave it to me a tool set but it's the only one thin enough to go through the hole but uh you're able to then obviously secure the nut on top because that spins otherwise and uh and you can take so you can secure that and take the big nut down the hole off so uh just got it going Yeah, that's the actual socket. Pretty cool. Okay, with that very odd multi-point nut off, we can go ahead and lower this down and separate it. Now I'm gonna ask you for a favor. It's not a big one. But to justify me doing these car videos to the missus, can you please just like the video? I mean, you don't need to subscribe, that's fine. But if you found it useful, remotely entertaining, just somewhat interesting, just hit the like button and I can justify my existence and my time and money spent on toys to the missus. That's it. Now back to the show. Radio, I just lowered it down, okay? And then the, there's enough play in, in the rest of this, so that's fine, nothing's hanging here. Um, and then the strut top, you just kind of push off because it's held on with the spring keeper and over the back. So close to the engine bay, comes right out. Once it's out, now we need to take the little bearing off the back. There's a little plane going past overhead, but uh, that's okay. To get the bearing off, you just got to gently pry around. It's not in here very tight. It's just press fit. You can, if you're tough enough, you could probably just pull it off with your fingers, but... Uh, Let's use tools, because even monkeys can use tools to make life a little bit easier. There we go. That is your bearing. That's your old top. Now, put your old uh, bolts back in, just so you don't lose them. It's just a nice, easy thing to do right now at this stage, so it doesn't uh, you don't forget about it and have to do it later. Now, you take your new camber top, flip it over, and it's not going to help be held in here very tight. It's just, just kind of sits there so it might fall out when you're reinstalling it uh, some guys will install that kind of on top of their spring uh, and put the top in separately and uh, some guys will put it in this way I think I'm gonna get the uh, this this on top of the spring first and then I'll just slide it onto this up underneath the car so you take your bearing reach up over the back and just slide it in and it just fits on top. Nice and easy. You don't want to move around the, the rubber boot too much, but it'll just it'll just sit into place once it's under tension. There we go, that's on there. Okay, now let's get our camber top up in the there. So we're gonna put it the same way we did. I can't film this in, at the same time, but uh, up over the back and into, into position. And then we'll probably put one or two screws uh, in there just to secure it up. Now these camera tops, there is a left, there is a right, it says on them, it says which way it goes to the front. Uh, if you screw that up, well, it's, you cannot can't because you got this big, huge, looks like a big washer thing on this corner too. It fits in a certain place up at the top. So through the back, we're gonna go that way up and over. And one, there we go. And we can get through the top and maneuver it from here too. We're gonna try putting the ring on, put the bearing ring on. Just to have a little bit more clearance, there we go. The bearing on it, there's a lot more room. Okay, now we're just gonna put in one or two screws to hold it while we 
get back in there. Probably going to fall when you let go of it, so you want to try to try to hold it position. Now we're going to start jacking it up. Now, something top tip I saw from somebody else, Aaron from uh, one of his videos, which is uh, help me DIY. He got a small 10 mil socket, put it on the top of the nut, and then help that guide it up through the hole in the camber plate. So, uh, so we're going to do that. Just put it through while well, you can look down in the hole and see it. And that's going to help guide it up once we get the and to keep it all together. We put our jack back in place and start lifting. Okay, our jack's in position. Now watch your hands and fingers and everything here. And I'm just going to slowly jack it up and make sure the bearing seats properly which I think it is there we go and we've got our little ratchet sticking through the top guiding it up and what else what's going on down here I think our lower dust boot has come out of the little groove that it's supposed to sit in there's a little channel that locks it in goes around there we go Okay, now we can bring it up and we'll get the nut ready to put onto the top. Now, to be honest, I had a hell of a time on the other side. I learned a lot. Learn a lot from me, please. First off, that uh, you know, use a little ratchet, the little socket on the extension to help guide it in. Wow, that made a massive difference. It just went straight in. Otherwise, you're fighting it, and yeah, it's a nightmare. Okay, back up top. Grab a nut. Put it on. Get it hand tight and we'll crank it down with that through in a second. Now what we're going to do now, uh, something I had a trouble with on the other side, was getting everything to seat. So just having to feel around, making sure that bearing is in where it's supposed to be. It's flat on all sides and it is. Perfect. So now we can, now we can start tightening things up. Uh, but well, first I guess we'll, we'll get some camber on this thing. This is what we paid for it. We'll loosen these off and push it over so it'll be in position to tighten it all down. Just quickly put in all these bolts here, just finger tight. Now I do have the torque settings for these guys. Um, I think if you have an M4, M3, you can use some of your factory bolts, but you gotta make sure they don't protrude down below. You don't want them sticking out onto the bottom of the camber plate because it can catch on the spring or something and not ideal, but we'll get these snugged up a little bit and then we'll torque them down. When you are tightening these, like I said, I'm just going, basically taking them up. You need to, you, well, there's five, so you're supposed to be doing a star pattern. So I just did one, skip one, next one, skip one, next one, and uh, do it like that. I guess it'll sit evenly then and seat correctly. Um, and get everything where it's supposed to be. So we do that one, we skip one, and then do this one. So yeah, I'm just going very loosely. And then back over, we'll do that one, because that one, the whole plate's come up, so that's got some 
face under the bolt head. And so has this one. All right, now, and I also put the uh, strut brace just bolt in here, just, just hand tight as well. So we'll crank all that to spec as um, soon as we get some camber in it. We'll push out, we'll release the jack. Actually, we'll do this, we'll film this. We'll just release the jack. Excuse this old jack. I have had this for a long time. Here we go, we are no longer sported. I've loosened these off. Now there's a specific way to tighten these too, a sequence. So we want to get, we want that right. Um, we're gonna loosen them off a little bit more. Okay, now we should be able to just push the strut and it moves over. I'm going to need two hands for this. Remember when I said to uh, check and make sure everything's seated properly? Well, it wasn't. The, uh, the spring wasn't quite on the bearing on the inside, so I had to loosen it off, drop it down again, and now it's on there. Okay, everything's aligned so we can jack it back up. And here we go. See? That guides it up so nicely. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And we'll torque up the camber bolts and there's a sequence you need to do. So you gotta do it first to 20 newton meters and then, that's it, and then to 24. And you do one, two, three in that sequence apparently. and then we'll change the torque wrench to 24 and then tighten them down to 24 newton meters. 24 newton meters. There you go, that's it. Other one, other bolt. That's the one. That's it. 24, okay. Now we gotta just tighten some more the more nuts up. You ready? So now we're gonna torque these down. These torque down to 24 newton meters as well. And we wanna do that in a crisscross course just like we there we go that's done and every other bolt so not that one the one next to it that's it this one here that's it this one here. That one there. Is there one more we need to do? That one there. And remember, keep the rag on here because there's a positive terminal under there and you don't want to get zapped. There we go. One more to torque. That's that big one there. The last, the strut brace nut, this big E Torx is 28 newton meters. Still really loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, go go back over. Oh. What's going on here? Why is my ratchet not right? torque wrench not working? There we go. Got it? 28 new mirrors. Not a lot, but we're on. That's it. Camber tops installed so uh the other side since it's the exact same you just have to deal with the uh 
little leveling arm thing the nut but that's it it's not too big a deal just gotta make sure you have the right tools so go get a few uh go get a few new tools increase the uh your tool library and get it done because this will get your car handling so much better with some additional camber uh we've initially set ours at max we are going to be running you know semi-slick tires on this uh at the track it's mostly a track car i think you're looking at around negative three degrees at full pushed over all the way uh with stock height you will get a little bit more with a little bit lower anyway that's it that's your millway camber tops installed uh now it's off to the alignment shop now you just want to reconnect any cables or anything you disconnected here i use a little bit of wd-40 makes it easy to slide them back on um and then pop your your uh sway bar end link back through that's 56 newton meters to crank that guy down to and then we slide in our clips uh clip in the little lines either your uh, brake sensor line or whatever abs line put those all back into place anything else you did under here tighten it back up put it back in and uh job done